hello, I am Gladianne from Heart Take the Wheel and you are joining me for another episode of 3 for Thursday where I share three things about something. So let's dive into today's episode. In today's episode, I am going to share with you three of my favorite house plants to use in photos as props, I guess is the best way to put that. I, I shoot a lot of stock photography, I shoot a lot of um, product, styled product photography, and um, I use a lot of my plants as props, and I'm going to share with you three of my favorites, or, or like go-tos, that almost always, one or the other, will always kind of, almost always fit into the frame and work well for the scene. However, I do want to let you know that these are not the only three I shoot. I have a plethora of plants that I choose from um, behind me here and also throughout the house. And um, it was kind of a tough choice. One was an easy go-to. That one had to make the, make the list. It's an obvious one of mine. And the other two were kind of hard to choose from because I, I decided to go with the ones I happened to recently grab the most, but I could easily have um, listed any of these other kind of plants behind me because a lot of them make the scene um, almost as often. So. I just want to let you know this was hard. <laughs> this was hard to come up with the three. So anyways, uh, let's dive in to the first one. So the first plant um, that I go to the most would be um, a, vari a variation of the Haworthias. Um, I have quite a few, as you can tell. And they are a go-to of mine for two really great reasons. One. Um, I, they're smaller and a lot of the subjects that I shoot like stock photos or products and stuff are small and so having a bigger plant in the scene the size difference does not work so I have to grab one of my smaller plants and I have a, a ton of different versions of these I've had this one the longest um, and he is just like going crazy here. He's a wild child. Um, and so he's a really great go-to because a lot of the color schemes I work with are in the rose gold nature. But this one also is featured quite often because uh, it's such a neutral kind of uh, container and he's tiny but he still has that beautiful texture to him. So um, and then I shoot him with and without the base depending on the scene. Um, but he's so tiny but that's also number um, to reason why I, I shoot these is because they have such beautiful texture to them and they add just that something extra special to um, to the scene. So that was my easy go-to for the list because Haworthias in their variations kind of appear in quite a few of my photos. But they are smaller, they have beautiful texture and that's um, it gives a lot of character to the photo. Okay, number two is this donkey's tail in this adorable freaking handmade um, from a local artist here in St. George. Um, and if he has a link or something, I'll go find it and I'll put it, I'll put it in the thingy in the box. Uh, but anyways, this donkey tail is such a beautiful plant, and the pot also kind of makes such a neutral kind of scene. But I love how he's spread out in different directions. And that works really well for flat lays because he's not just kind of going up. Because for example, this one doesn't really work so well in a flat lay because if you look down onto it, it's it's just, I don't know, it's too narrow of a profile. Whereas this one would work though. So it does depend on what's going on because this one has, he's wild. He's spreading all over the place. Um, and this one works really well as a, a top down shot, right? That flat lay. Um, he also works beautifully in a more 45 or straight on because he's kind of, you can turn around and get different, different viewpoints. And he's just a pretty like light sagey green and um, that light color works really well to not take too much away from the scene. And that's another thing I'm looking for when I choose a plant is it, do I need to add that color or do I need something that's just sort of kind of uh, light and airy and that's going to match because if you guys are aware of my Instagram feed you know that um, a lot of the work that I do is very clean it's very minimal and, and um, neutral based and so the colors I add have to kind of me meld <laughs> melt I don't know they have to like combine well into that kind of real neutral uh, palette so and then also when I'm working with clients and their products, I want to make sure that I have different variations of greens to choose from. That's another reason why I would choose one plant over the other, is that it would um, match the client's kind of color scheme better. So there's that. And then last but not least, oh, 
is the, is the rubber plant. Number three is this rubber plant. Um, as you can tell, he's not the happiest right now. I actually have been a little lapsed on my caretaking these days because I haven't been home very much. I've been out networking like a crazy mad woman. So I haven't been taking care of my plants. So today is a very big plant to take care of day. <laughs> Which is also why I decided to do a video of them because they need some extra special lovin's lately. So anyways, this uh, rubber plant, he is bigger though, so I I can't use him as much as I would like because a lot of the products and things I shoot are a smaller scale, but um, I love his color tones. So he's got a really rich, dark tone to him. He also has some, a little bit of like a purpley um, kind of dark green, olive, uh, he's got these dark rich colors to him so he works really well if I need a high contrast um, plant in the photo. If I need to bring that, if I have a dark theme situation or if I have a really bright photo that needs a dark element to it. So I wouldn't use this unless um, in a product shoot unless the product um, was vibrant enough on its own or was uh, contrasty enough on its own to still stand up against this because when I'm choosing props I'm also in a product scene I'm also making sure that the props don't take away from the product I want the product to still stand out as like being the highlight of the shot and a lot of the props I use have to um, like kind of enhance that not not steal the show if that makes sense and he is a, sto a show stealer <laughs> Um, so I don't use him as often as I'd like, but if I have a nice death scene or if I'm shooting a uh, stock, then I can do what I want, right? If I'm not shooting a product, um, then I have like a nice desk with a laptop and like a notebook and then him off in the corner, he would hold his own and it, and having a prop that's this strong means I don't have to use as many props in a scene. So that's another thing to consider. Those are my three most used kind of favorites, I suppose, for uh, plants to use as props in uh, photos. And I hope you enjoyed that or got something out of it. Maybe you needed a uh, photo of uh, a plant to use in some of your photos. Like maybe you have a small product that you want to shoot a lot of um, photos of and you're looking for a plant to feature. I would totally suggest the Haworthias because they come in all tinier sizes. They don't need a ton of water. They're a succulent. Um, and so you don't need a whole lot to take care of a guy like that and he also adds a lot to the scene. There's also different variations so if you need something a little more toned down in the texture department um, this guy for example doesn't have as vibrant of a texture on his on his body there so anyways I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next week Thursday. Bye! Thank you.